Today is a special day. We have four high-end video cards that came in. Three of them came in locally and one of them was mailed in. The person said, he watched us on YouTube and he brought in two 5090s. And he said those two 5090s, they were working. One of them is Asus and the other one is Founders Edition. But as soon as he upgraded fans to a water block, they stopped working. Hopefully we can help out the customer. I do not know what's going on. He said maybe he suspects that one of them may have liquid metal damage, but we'll see. And I have a 5090 here in front of me. FedEx brought it in today. And customer mailed over ports along with the card. What's going on with the card? I did read the description. We'll go over it. Maybe we'll work on this card in this video. He said he tried to mod it, the shunts adding an extra connector and he damaged the cart. The cart is no longer working. And we also had a customer that came in with a 4090 melted connector. I did not even look at the connector on this one. Let's take a look. And what's new, right? We've done thousands of melted connectors. We'll do the same for the customer. Hopefully there's nothing else wrong with the cart. But I always tell customers, I do not want them to have 100% hope that their card will be fixed. I always tell customers 50-50. And all four cards are expedited, so we have to do them as soon as possible. Let's take a look at this 5090 and see what's going on. And you see, look at the shunts. Customer attempted to replace them, and look at what happened. It's always easier said than done, especially when dealing with a 12 to 15 layer board. Removing even the tiniest component is difficult because the board must get saturated with heat before you're able to remove any component on the board. Solder on this component will only melt when the board under it, the pads under it, reach the melting temperature of solder. If you are applying hot air, the board will get saturated with heat and the board is going to keep absorbing the heat, absorbing the heat, absorbing the heat until this point here reaches the melting temperature of solder, and that's when you will be able to remove the component. So on cards like this, especially if you do not have any experience, it's your first time, second time, 10th time, it's difficult, it's not easy. And you end up with a damaged card like this. Damaged connector as well, and that's because of the extreme heat the person applied you see that burnt connector? The connector may still be functional, but we do not trust it. I see solder inside here, right? Look at this. I mean, that's a connector that we need to replace, even though the connector may still be functional, but it's not clean. And the customer looks like he attempted to add another connector. You see, look at this, we see burn marks right here, the connector deformed from down here, from here, from here. Let's read what the customer wrote. I attempted both a shunt mod and to add a second 12VHPWR connector to the card for safety reasons. Both went bad and I damaged the card further trying to remove the connector and remove the resistors for the shunt mod. The original power connector and R22 inductor was damaged as well trying to remove the resistors. I've ordered new power connectors and new sense resistors to replace the damaged ones if needed. I don't care about the shunt mod anymore. I just like to get the card back up and running. Having a second power connector added to the card would be great, but I understand if it's not possible. I did test the card once and it posted in BIOS and made it to Windows login screen, but the screen goes black shortly after. Okay, so we see a combination of shunt resistor issue, which we already looked at. It's obvious. The customer attempted to remove the resistors and it was not possible, and that's what I explained. Even the tiniest component on the board is hard to remove because of the thermal mass of the board. So I think we're gonna give the customer what he wants. We're gonna replace both connectors and we're gonna replace the shunt resistors and we're gonna fix whatever damage we see on the board. 
That way the customer gets everything he wants. All in one go. Let's start by removing the connector, cleaning the holes, removing the resistor, finish with this area, and then we can jump over to this area. Start by preheating the board. Whatever tools we are using on our bench, everything from the end of that flux, Lomel solder, this amazing microscope, tweezers, Braidwick, thermal camera, one-stop shop. Log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. We can use our NF dot sucker. I cannot put it under the microscope. It's too long, but we're gonna suck solder from the holes. And the holes are perfectly clean, very nice. Oh, look at this. This was soldered onto another resistor. Two of them. What in the world? One and two. Why do we have four resistors here? Two ways we can do this. We can pre-apply solder, reflow the resistors, or we can clean the pads, put the resistor, and then solder each end of the resistor. No right or wrong way. Since the connector is already removed, we do not have to worry about burning the connector, so let's go ahead and reflow those resistors in place. Uh, very nice. Uh, we want to make sure all the pins are seated inside the holes. And we are done, right? Looks amazing. No, that's how I do it. I soak the pins with solder and then I go over them another time and make them look better than factory.
All right, so we did an amazing job with the connector right here. And we replaced the two current sense resistors right here. And now we're gonna go ahead and do this one. And the connector is out. Now we're gonna suck solder from the holes. A lot of you are waiting for the end of that sucker. It's been out of stock for a while now. We're working on it. And just log into our site and click on notify me when item is back in stock. We'll let you know when it's back in stock. It's a lifesaver. Some viewers, they tell me why not have an electric one rather than the manual one. This is a lot faster. Point, click, point, click, point, click. The other one, you have to put it on the hole. You have to wait. This is a lot faster, a lot more efficient. Let's check. Did we desolder the holes? And we did. So the first thing we want to do is secure the connector in place. We just apply random solder blobs. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Now we can let go of the connector and then solder the connector pin by pin. And tell me this is not better than factory. Now everything looks nice, the soldering, the shiny joints. But we want the car to work. That's what matters. If you cannot see yourself with those joints, you cannot comb your hair, or if you're a lady, if you cannot do your makeup on those joints, the mirror-like joints, then do not accept this soldering job. That's what I tell my customers. Just final cleanup. And solder made its way all the way top of the pins. So that's one connector that we replaced right here. And that's the second one right here along with the current sense resistors. And let's take a look at the back. And this one here. Awesome. We'll reassemble the board and I'll quickly test it here and then Big Boss can do rest of the testing. Invoice and mail this back to the customer. I'll be back in a minute. Now, one tiny issue. Actually, it's a major issue. The card has no thermal pads on it. No thermal pads on the housing, no thermal pads on the back, and the customer cleaned the card 100%, nothing on it. What the customer did was he sent us this bag that contains thermal pads from 0.5 to 2, 0 
1, 1.5, and 2. And he's hoping that we can figure it out on where to put the thermal pads, what thickness goes where. And there's no available information on the thickness of the thermal pads on the Gigabyte 1590, where each one goes where, or if we need something more than size 2. I don't know. We can do maybe two on the VRAM chips, 1.5 to 2 on the DR MOSFETs, maybe one on the back plate, but I do not know if those are the right measurements. If anybody has any information on the thickness of the thermal pads on the 1590, the Gigabyte 1590, let me know. Leave it down in the comments. I do not want to do it wrong, and I do not know the measurements or the thickness of the pads that go on the 1590. Let me grab the video card from Big Boss. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it without reassembling. I just want to see an image because the last time the customer checked, he did not get an image. And he did not get an image because the board was a mess. All right, so we're going to look at this monitor. And I'm going to use this tiny heat sink for the core. Just for the time being. We're going to turn the card on. The core is getting hot. I can feel it. And yes, we have an image. We have the Dell logo and we have an image, but the core is burning off. All right, so we're gonna call this a successful repair. Two connectors, two current sense resistors. Nothing else is wrong with the card. Now, one of the two options, we did see an image on the screen and I had no doubts that the card was going to work. We replaced two connectors, two current sense resistors. We realigned some of the components on the board. I covered some of the scratches on the board and nothing else is wrong with the board. We did power it on, we saw an image and the core got really hot, really fast, almost burning my finger. I turned off the power supply and now we have one of the two options. If I'm able to find information on what thickness thermal pads goes where, I'll do it for the customer. Otherwise, we're going to have to mail this back to the customer and he'll need to figure it out. If anybody has any information on the thickness of the thermal pads, where each one goes where, let me know, leave it down in the comments. Maybe I can help out the customer, install the thermal pads, reassemble it and mail it back to him, or the customer is gonna have to figure it out. I don't know how, maybe contact the maker if they'll give him this information or find somebody with the exact same card that measured the thicknesses of the thermal pads. And we'll take it from there. I did a quick search, I even asked GPT, no information available for this particular card. I'll search more online and I'll see if I can find this information. But for the time being, we are done. Card. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video. We did an amazing job. Awesome. Yeah, you see, Big Boss is telling me that the customer cleaned the housing here so he can see himself in the mirror. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing on the board and nothing on the housing.